right, I just want to do a quick review on this mud motor that I got for the SKNU here. Uh, uh, we got this from Temple Dillard, Temple's Long Tail and Fur. He's got a cool uh, YouTube channel, so go check that out or look him up on Facebook. He sells these things. Uh, pretty awesome. I just weighed it and it weighs, uh, this weighs 68 pounds, this weighs 20 pounds. So you're looking at, you know, just under 90 pounds. If you've got a packet for portage and whatnot, like I've had to, um, it's not too bad to take off and carry for a little ways. It's, if you had to, you can take it apart in seconds um, if you need to break it up into a little bit lighter sections. All right, got everything loaded back up. Didn't sink, did a quick check for all the gear, make sure I didn't lose anything, um, which is a pretty common occurrence. Looks like we got everything, so we're gonna keep moseying. Uh, dragging this canoe through the woods with this motor on kind of sucks. And I sank it once while pulling it up on a pretty steep bank. So you got a lot of weight back there. And uh, I just pulled it up and it took on a little bit of water and then it took on some more and some more. And then pretty soon this whole thing was underwater, um, which kind of sucked, but it, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Which kind of leads me to my next uh, topic is what I would recommend bringing if you have one of these or if you're going to be running one of these. So it comes with a toolkit. Uh, there's a couple different pieces in there for uh, doing general maintenance, but then there's some some other stuff. And this comes with the motor. This is just a um, a power ease motor. I believe he gets them from AIH. I, I'm not sure. You can put a Honda motor on here. You can put whatever kind of motor you want, he'll put on there. So what I would bring, um, like I said, toolkit, you're gonna want this spark plug wrench, uh, whatever it comes with your motor. So get way down in there, take your spark plug out, pump all the water out if you do sink it. If you don't have this, it's gonna be a pain in the ass to get everything apart to get the spark plug out because it'll be hydro locked if you sink this thing. What I would recommend bringing is your oil. Whatever oil you're running in your motor, bring some more of that. Um, if you do sink it or have an issue, um, you're gonna want more oil. One of the things is if you fill this at level, when you're running the motor, it's tilted. So you, you kind of need a little bit more oil in there than, than it's designed to. So um, as Temple recommended, I brought some oil and I added a little bit at a time until it quit dying because there's a low oil sensor in here. So if you're, you're making a corner you tend to kind of tip the motor up more to get just just the way it works the body mechanics of it you kind of end up tipping it and that's when i found that it was dying so i just added a little bit of oil until it quit dying and it worked great um, the other thing i would bring is a grease gun i bought this just to stay with this motor you don't have to do that but uh, temple recommended that we grease it every five hours and a crescent wrench um, there's a lot of adjustments on here little little nuts and bolts and stuff to where you can turn this handle you can adjust the balance of it even for taking the the shaft off it's nice to have a crescent wrench uh, I put mine on a little carabiner so that I could just hook it I got a little rope back here and I just hook it on there so it just dangles there thing that I threw in mind uh, was this little dry box and it's just got uh, extra bug dough, duct tape, screwdriver, some tools, trap and wire. Um, and that, so that's where I put my, my tool kit stuff. You can put your crescent wrench in there. Um, my grease gun doesn't fit in there, but it's got a nice spot to sit back here anyway. And then I tie that with a lanyard right here that way if I ever flip over I got my stuff in there my cell phone was going in there and uh, my wallet so if you have your wallet cell phone whatever a nice little dry box pretty handy the other thing I would recommend is is if you have a Ramex is there's nowhere to sit in this area 
and the motor sticks forward the handle sticks forward to about here so you can't you can't sit on the intended seat when you're running it so i threw a, a just a beer cooler in and it's the perfect height for what i need so i actually drive it off the other way but so i'm facing the camera i drive it like this and my leg fits nicely over this bar this cooler is pretty tough an action packer those seem to those fail after a while of sitting on them cooler seems to be a little more sturdy also this is a pretty new cooler so the latch is real tight i've got camera gear in there um, just anything i need to get real quick i put in here that way if, if i'm running i can just pop up here you know grab my hat or a gopro or my big camera or whatever i need to grab it's right here i did did have this thing come out of the canoe when i sank it and it stayed latched all my gear stayed in there um, I just grabbed it out of the river, so worked out pretty good. All right, so I'll show you how to put it together. It's pretty simple. I'm not going to get crazy with cranking those down just because I'm going to take it back off. Also, these guys right here, um, they were jam nuts that were on the back of these, and it made it just to where it's really hard to get this on and off the clearance wasn't good enough so there's a little circlip there's a pad in here and there's a little circlip so you take that circlip off and then the little pad comes off and then you can take these jam nuts off so this just has a spline shaft and it just slides in here And I have a, I put a little mark on mine so I know where it's, it's good to go. Also, there's some, a grease zerk and some screws here, and you just kind of line that up with this split. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then you just crank these down. It's in there. So one of the things Temple said to do was take this shaft and um, pull it back and forth. There should be no in play. And then this, when you put it on, this is a tapered, tapered shaft here. So you just tighten this up snug. You're not trying to crank it on there because this is tapered. It'll split that. It, it did come with a spare prop too, which is pretty sweet. That's in the cooler. So that's right there is, is how I paddle it. Um, if you have that thing sticking out the back and you're in tight, tight areas when you're like paddling down river, it'll hang up in the brush and it's kind of pain in the ass. So you just flip this thing around it's super simple and then it's out of the way and then I'll show you you just grab it now if you're in the deep water and you do this um, you can actually it, it, the canoe gets kind of tippy so if you're gonna be flipping it around and back just um, the first couple times you do it do it in a spot where you can get out of the canoe to where you can kind of feel the balance now that I've done it a couple times, I can swing it around. But the first time I did it, uh, I flipped the canoe over and it sucked. So you can see, this is how I run it. Um, I got a bunch of B-roll I'll put in here. And so you can see some of the cool areas we went. one of the other things that I did um, is I put this little carabiner right here and I put some wire around the handle so that if I did have to go over a log or something I can just let it go and it holds the motor up out of the water shaft off just to, so I can show you this so if you're in deep water and you let that go like in a beaver slough or something and you let this motor go it'll tip all the way like this 
and all your oil and everything's going into your engine it's not good um, and then you got to reach way back here to grab this thing and if you're floating backwards and that digs into the ground then then you're like yarding on it and putting a bunch of pressure on it this thing will also flop sideways and then you're really way out of whack so i would recommend putting some sort of holder or catch uh, i'm probably going to do something a little bit better maybe something that just flops over and grabs that but that was what i just had a carabiner and some wire so i just did it that way it's a little awkward you got to turn around and use both hands so i'm looking for something that i can do with just one hand real quick Another thing um this is the balance balance point in here so if you're high high you know full throttle and it's you're having to lift up on the handle to really push that down in there temple said to move this back i didn't have any problems i really didn't do a bunch of full throttle action um i was just kind of putting at idle this thing will push this canoe right up um right up river so and then here's the throttle mechanism it's pretty simple it's just a it's just a brake lever pretty sweet and you can just spin this thing around move it a little bit it goes into the into the handle right here so you don't want to yard on it too much but um you, and then you can adjust back there where the throttle is so this thing if it's wide open it's kind of if it's wide open you got to really open your hand so i adjusted mine to where it's a little bit tighter because you really you're not this isn't traveling that far to get you a full throttle uh one thing that i am going to change is this lanyard clips onto your body and then if you fall out it pulls pulls that no biggie it's pretty sweet you know most of the areas i was in the canoe was going to get hung up on something if i fell out of it but i don't like it that that's the only way to kill it unless you reach way back here for the kill switch so what i'm going to do probably is put like a snow machine style kill switch right here in line with this so you can if you fall out it'll kill it also you can you know have the momentary the newer snow machine um the newer snow machine kill switches are like a momentary you just hold it or you can get an old one and put o-rings underneath it or whatever i just want something a little bit quicker so i don't have to fiddle with this thing so much oh one other thing i forgot to mention is because this isn't set up like a regular canoe you can't just pull it out of the water and flip it over so one of the things that i had in my other boat was uh one of these thirsty mates they weigh next to nothing and i after rainstorms and what like not, and after rainstorms and whatnot i would just jump in here pump that thing out and it was super nice having that i you know i've i've bailed this as you've seen before i've bailed this canoe out with with uh beer cans or whatever i have laying around and that kind of sucks so this thirsty mate that's a ticket yeah so if you want one of these motors get a hold of temple dillard temple dillard's long tail and fur he's in fairbanks um he's on youtube he's on uh facebook messenger is how i talk to him usually he's on facebook just type in the name it'll come up He's got a pretty cool YouTube channel. Uh, it's kind of a vlog. He does a bunch of cool stuff with his kids and trapping and hunting and stuff like that. So definitely go check that out. Well, that's a wrap on this little review on this motor. So um, stay tuned for our moose hunting video. It's not over yet.